Godzilla vs. Kong is finally on HBO Max and in movie theaters around the world for those fortunate enough to go see them. I myself watched at home with my family, so the experience wasn't great. The title really says it all. This is Godzilla vs. Kong, and if that's all you want, if you just want the cool, unbridled action, it's going to give it to you. The problem is, in between that action, you're going to have to deal with some horrible, horrible writing. I'm more than willing to sit through a stupid plot. I like Jurassic World. I do, however, have limits, and that's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Unfortunately, that's the side of the spectrum that Godzilla and Kong fit in. Kong has been imprisoned by the humans in some sort of a futuristic island cage. How they were able to subdue this creature and put him in the prison is anybody's guess. Uh, I don't know. He, he's captured multiple times and then kind of lugged around by the humans against his will. L like, I, I'm just looking at the semantics of it all. There's, there's one point where all these helicopters are carrying him via net back to Skull Island. And I'm just thinking like, what did this entail? How much work was it? What, did you guys have to lift him to get the ropes underneath? I, I mean, just everything about it was just bothering me. But I, I was willing to set that aside as long as the action was cool and the story didn't get too stupid. <laughs> oh, it did. It got too stupid. I'm not going to reveal any spoilers today. If you've seen any trailers and have followed this movie at all, you know how it's going to play out already. It's, it's, it's pretty paint by numbers. Let me list some of the things that work. The big one is the fights. The battles, there's three of them, I guess. Pretty lengthy ones. Um, those you can see. The action's awesome, the choreography's there, there's some there's some fun, creative ways that these two go at it. I don't have any complaints as far as the fighting goes. The sound design is cool, the visuals are fantastic, especially the neon fight at night uh, in, in Hong Kong. That stuff looks sick. The music is solid, the, the beasts themselves, the designs are pretty sweet. Although I feel like Godzilla kind of took a step back. For, for me, he looked a little off in this film, and I don't know if that's because at one point he like legitimately smiles at the camera. I, I don't know, something was just a little off with him here. The little deaf girl gives a fantastic performance. She's the only character I liked in the movie. Um, and I guess that's a nice segue to the, the negatives of the film. As I've previously mentioned, the story's dumb. I'm not gonna break it down. I don't think I could break it down if I tried. My brain would just fall out of my ear trying to, trying to decipher what I witnessed. Miley, Bobby Brown, and Kyle Chandler are back. America's hero, Kyle Chandler, the everyman. He could have maybe done this over lunch. I don't know how much time he had to film. Couldn't have been more than a day because you barely see him. He has no purpose. And unfortunately, neither does Miley Bobby Brown, who has a large chunk of film dedicated to her. And her storyline with her little pals that she comes into contact with, it, it goes nowhere. They do nothing. We have probably a half hour dedicated to their shenanigans where they infiltrate this this base that has no security, where they, they, they stop some sort of a machine by spilling coffee on a keyboard. I mean, I, I just, I, I will lose my shit if I try to break this down. There is some cool lore in the movie. I wish it was explained further. I wish that was the focus. You know, the movie starts making us think, whoa, this really is going to be a Kong film. We're, we're spending some time with him. He's, he's flipping around the trees. And I think if they would have gone for broke with that and just did the whole story through his perspective, we could have had something kind of special here. But no, no, the studio wasn't going to go for that. Instead, they introduce a bunch of new characters that are all pretty bland and boring. They don't make a lot of sense. And I think that goes to my biggest gripe with the film is the technology jump. So in the first couple movies with Godzilla and Kong, obviously Kong was a timepiece, but they stayed true to form with technology as it is today. For the most part, King of the Monsters gets a little bit more futuristic, but holy crap, we took a big jump here. Like I'm talking a hundred year leap. No, probably, probably, probably more than that, considering what gets uh, created. The tech in this movie is out of control. They're doing this nonsensical stuff with ships, they're, they're, they're digging holes into the center of the earth. They're, they're building giant creations. It's just nonsense. And I can't, I can't get over it. I, I couldn't suspend my disbelief enough to get on board with anything. My biggest gripe though, is they did not give us a tangible reason for these two Titans to go at it. Other than there can only be one King, you know, it's, it's a King of the Hill scenario. There can only be one on top. That does not fly for me. I need something more compelling because I found myself almost nodding off at a Godzilla vs. Kong movie. 
I wanted to be a little bit more into it than I was. I mean, the, the first time these two meet to fight, I wanted it to be impactful. I wanted it to be epic. But instead, it's just, okay, well, finally we got here. It took a while, but they're going. They're going to fight. Cool. Even in the dumbest of films, there has to be some stakes, and I just didn't feel them. I didn't believe any of it. At the end of the day, you're going to be in two camps. You're going to be in the camp that's a movie buff that just wants to have a good film to watch, or you're going to be in the camp that's just a fanboy or fangirl, and you just want to see your heroes, your action figures fight and battle and everything else you can forgive. If you're in that camp, I think you're going to love Godzilla vs. Kong. I have no complaints as far as the battles go. If, however, you appreciate good storytelling, writing, filming, you know, all that crap that nobody cares about anymore, probably not going to like this one very much like me. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the films. Leave a like if you had some fun. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.